Hi, my name is Anthony Walsh from NAM System in the Czech Republic. NAM System is a Czech company with 30 years of experience of producing and developing hardware and software technologies. Our core business is vehicle monitoring under the brand of Oni System, with around 40,000 assets being currently monitored both domestically and internationally in the private and commercial sectors. As a result of our in-depth knowledge and experience of vehicle tracking, we developed our first rally system over 13 years ago for the Auto Club České Republiky, or Czech Auto Club. We are now on our fourth generation of rally monitoring system. As a result of our strong partnership with the Czech Auto Club, we have developed a world-class system. The number of countries in which our monitoring system is being used is growing. Due to our collaboration with the Czech Auto Club, we've gained a deep understanding of rally events and how a rally monitoring system best meets the needs of the user. We also know why it is so important to have a reliable and capable system when taking into account crew safety, organisation, spectator safety and compliance with regulations, whether that be local event stipulations, FIA rally safety guidelines, local authority regulations or legal or highways law. What is Oni System Rally Monitoring and how to sum it up? Well, it's a complete hardware and software solution for successful and safe management of a rally event. We know there are other products and solutions on the market, and we've positioned ourselves to provide the best value and the best safety for your rally. In this presentation, we will give you an overview of the hardware and software and how it comes together, and the main benefits and features such as accident detection, detailed information, main and backup transmission alarm alerts, reporting of stops during the special stage, red flag, SOS. We'll also give you some contacts and references at the end. We have a full range of comprehensive video manuals available, along with brochures and detailed written manuals. There are also quick handy guides which we produce for distribution to crews and officials at the event itself. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or email us direct and we will answer them as soon as we can. Our email addresses are at the end of this presentation and in the video description. We hope you find this presentation interesting and useful. The Oni System Solution This slide shows the hardware equipment necessary for pre-event preparation. All our units use GPS and 2G mobile GSM network for data communication. The race units also use UHF radio frequency. In order to set up a rally project, firstly you will need to record the routes. This is done with a plug and play route recording device on the left. There are two buttons, one to record the start and stop position of the special stage, and the second can also be used to identify areas where speed restrictions are to be imposed either within the special stage or a separate route can be recorded for reconnaissance so that the speed restrictions can be set for this, for example, within built up areas. Cars driving on reconnaissance use the NCL 21 recce unit or reconnaissance unit. It is battery operated with a long life battery, waterproof and magnetic. It is portable so that it can be used in private vehicles with no installation, as these are most frequently used on reconnaissance. These units can also be used for monitoring safety and support vehicles during the main rally. If you're interested in having these units for other business, please contact us, as they are available for the general market as well. It is also an opportunity for rally monitoring service providers to offer these to rally fans as another way of generating an additional income stream. The complete assembly comprises of the race display unit, wireless control unit, fixing brackets, power cable and combined GPS GSM antenna. Units with a touchscreen can be difficult to operate with gloves so weave buttons on the main unit and also use the easy to operate wireless control unit with the OK button and the protected SOS switch. The reason for a protected SOS switch is that it avoids accidental operation. This was mentioned as a concern by rally organisers at the recent FIA safety seminar hosted by the Czech Auto Club in Prague 2020 in conjunction with the FIA. 
We also provide clear, simple and easy instructions for use for all crew. The system is quick and easy to install and once the power cable is routed and connected to the car battery, it takes a matter of minutes to install a complete system. Regular competitors and users of the Oni system rally monitoring solution can pre-install the power cable and GPS GSM antennas for use throughout the season. For occasional users, the magnetic version is available. Full instructional quick guides for installation are given out when the units are distributed. Here is an example of one of our quick guides which can be handed to the teams when the units are given out. The race display unit is the main component in the vehicle, the brain of the system, and it's easy to use. Installation should occur before scrutineering or vehicle inspection to check that it's fitted correctly and tested for operation. For rally organisers or race control, we have the web portal and mobile application as interfaces for managing and monitoring the event. It is also possible to use the mobile application for spectators and other rally officials, so that they themselves can have an overview of all of the vehicles involved in the rally. Within the portal, all of the information about the race, route, vehicles and points of interest can be accessed. It may also be useful to know that contact telephone numbers of crew in each vehicle can be added to the race vehicle record in the portal, so that when an accident occurs, contact can be made. Information can also be added to organiser vehicle records. So how does it all work and come together? The unit in the vehicle receives a GPS signal from the GPS satellites and then sends this information through the primary GSM communication channel. If GSM is not available, it can send information via UHF, which is relayed vehicle to vehicle until it reaches a vehicle that has a GSM signal. I will talk more about the GSM and UHF radio transmission later. When the signal has been sent, it is routed to our servers in Prague, with backup servers in Ostrava. Here the data is processed and then sent out via the internet to the computers in Rally Control. Rally Pre-Event Remember our plug and play route recording unit I showed a few slides ago? Aside from recording the start, finish and route, it is also capable of capturing the GSM signal strength and coverage along the route. This helps organisers in deciding where to place radio points and marshals should there be reduced GSM coverage on the stage. There is a graphical colour display of the route on the map to indicate signal strength and there's also detailed analysis of the signal data should you require. To assist further with rally organisation, it is possible to place POIs, points of interest, on the map within the portal. We have different icons for different functions, so you can see quickly at a glance what is what on the map overview. For the reconnaissance phase, the units were implemented into the system for the reasons set out on screen. I will leave you to read through those for a moment. The main event and why we developed the system and why you're watching this presentation. It is, of course, to talk about safety. Let's have a look at the main benefits and special safety features and functions of the system in more detail. Automatic accident detection, detailed accident information, reporting of stops during the special stage, SOS and red flag. There is also a main and backup transmission path for alarm alerts. Let's look at automatic detection and detailed information first. Accident alerts are automatically generated and are triggered by the accelerometer. If the vehicle is moving and there's an impact detected, the unit will generate a report. After the accident happens, the in-car alert is loud enough to get the crew's attention and clear on-screen instructions are shown. The alert is sounded within seconds of impact. Once the crew responds, the alert will stop or it will continue according to the interaction of the crew based on instructions for use. 
At the same time, rally control receive an alert, which again is loud enough. The accident report is then sent from the vehicle to rally control for immediate attention and assessment. As soon as an accident is detected, it is automatically sent to vehicles following behind on the special stage. And the message to these vehicles will change depending on the in-car response by the crew involved in the accident or by rally control. It will either remain an accident or be an obstruction, an SOS, or it will be cleared. Have a look at this video to see just how quickly an accident report is generated. To je ono, jak to není ta zatáčka. Oops. Pojď ven a řekni OK. No, zmáčkni, As you can see, it takes only a few seconds after impact for the alert to sound. For interest, the conversation in the car was about not knowing that there was a course deviation. What does an accident report look like in race control? If you remember the infographic showing how the system works, the race unit registers an accident, sends all the information via GSM or UHF relay and then GSM to the server in Prague. This is then converted to an accident report and sent back out from the server to the computers in rally control. This is all within 15 seconds. On this accident report, you can see there's a map location, details of the vehicle or the asset, the time, speed, combined and individual axis g-forces. With experience, you'll be able to interpret the information presented in the report. And we can, of course, help with interpretation in the early stages of use and training in use of the system. On the right is the accelerometer reading graph and the speed graph, which really help to understand what has happened. All of the data is useful in assessing the severity of an accident and all reports stored in the system for recall and review after the event. In this example, the vehicle is initially traveling fast. It brakes and slides off the track and hits a tree. Deceleration is over four seconds and the impact is medium and the vehicle does not roll. In this one, we can see that the speed is low, but the g-force is higher, which could mean a more serious incident. The vehicle is also not on its wheels, which you can tell from the wide spacing at the end of the g-force graph. When interpreting accident reports, I would say that the most important assessment to be made is the time or rate of deceleration versus the level of g-force. During and after an accident, the body's response is one of survival. Adrenaline flows and once it subsides, it can leave you with shock. If a crew member is in shock, they may be disoriented or injured and may not even know it. This is why reports are sent to race control for interpretation. It is always best for a second opinion. To recap, why do we send this information to rally control and why is it important? It's important to send the most appropriate help in the shortest time possible and also to make decisions on the allocation of resources. What does it look like from the crew's point of view? and I mean both the crew and the vehicle involved in the accident and those crew following behind. What happens? If an accident occurs, there is an in-car alarm that sounds on the race unit and the crew are asked to confirm whether or not they are okay. If they don't for whatever reason, as shown on the slide, this remains as an accident alert for the vehicles following. For detailed information about the alerts, responses and actions, please refer to our manuals. Again, from a crew perspective, by pressing OK, it changes the response on the display of vehicles following and clears the upcoming reported accident. So by saying they're OK, they're saying they're not injured and they don't present as an obstacle on the course. Let's have a look at some examples of the accidents and interpret them by using the G-Force graph. To stress the importance of why a system with accident detection is the best option, if there is more than one accident at a time, where do we send help first? Do we deploy resources to a small accident and risk not being able to send it to a more serious accident? Do we have a full response or a partial response? 
What resources do we send? Are we going to raise the red flag? These are all accidents from the 2019 Badum Rally Zlin in the Czech Republic, and this is accident one. How serious is the accident? First, let me explain the G-force graph. The red line is the x-axis, which is left and right. The blue line is y, which is front and rear, and the green is z, which is up and down. So how serious is it? What do you think? The force range is from minus 2g to plus 1g, and there are certainly some big spikes. Now for the video of what actually happened. I would imagine the crew were okay in that one, frustrated and annoyed, but not injured. We can tell you that the vehicle slowed down from 175 km an hour to 100 km an hour before sliding under braking, which is when the accident was detected and the graph data was recorded. From the video, it's easier to make an assessment. If it was just a simple notification of an accident with no data, how serious is it? With an accident report, you can immediately start to make an assessment. Next up, accident two. What about this one? What do you think? Minus 0.4G to plus 0.7G. If you remember, we mentioned low G-force is less serious. What about the separations of the lines at the end? Let's have a look. A low G-force roll with no serious injuries. The separation of the lines at the end means that the vehicle is not on its wheels. Accident 3. Okay, so this one has a bigger range of G-force from minus 2G to plus 4G with some big spikes. And based on what we've said before about the line separation at the end, it should be on all four wheels. The video on the next slide is firstly full speed from amateur footage and then from onboard camera. Then we'll show it slowed down and overlay the graph for you. You can hear the accident alert sounding in the background in this one. You can see the green is high where the car is lifted on first impact and the red is the side impact and the blue is where it was going forward and now spins. This was fortunately moderate, yet a few centimetres difference and it could have been very different. The decision lies with rally control as to their interpretation of the gravity and seriousness of the accident from using the available information and their experience of monitoring previous incidents. The graph for this accident showed that the vehicle was on four wheels at the end, but only just. Accident 4 Here we have some higher g-force readings, marked to show minus 2.5g to plus 7.5g. I can also tell you that this was at fairly high speed. I think we might all agree before even seeing the footage that we want to get someone to this regardless. <laughs> Luckily, the crew did not receive really serious injuries, although they were taken to hospital and treated for broken ribs. Here is the summary of what happened.
Let's take a look at some accident characteristics. We can use the graphs to interpret the crash, taking into account the speed, deceleration, force of impact, and whether the vehicle is on four wheels or not. The G-force graph is shown above the speed graph in the accident report and has the same time scale. So you can look at the duration of the accident, the speed and the force combined. This is the same graph and information for the serious accident a few slides ago. Of course, when it is a live event, we don't have the luxury of video comparison and experience will help with assessing accidents as to their seriousness. Again, I stress the decision lies with rally control as to their interpretation of the gravity and the seriousness of the accident. This is aided by using the available information from ONI system and the operator's experience of previous incidents. The experts in this are the operators of the system for the Czech Auto Club and Rallies Lynn. So please feel free to contact them if you'd like to find out what their experience of using our system is. We showed a couple of slides earlier what the display unit looks like from the crew perspective and what response options they have. Now we will show it in some more detail, including additional information that they might need. What we want to know from a rally monitoring system in terms of crew safety after an accident is, are they okay? Do they need assistance? Is there an obstacle on the track? And the crews following behind want to know, are they approaching an obstacle? Are they approaching an accident and should give assistance? And for all crews, has the special stage been red flagged? These are some of the information messages or instructions crew can receive on the display unit. When an accident happens, the unit detects the accident, sends the information data and asks the crew if they're okay. Look at the display on the left. The display on the right is showing in the car following behind, which receives notification alerting them to the upcoming accident. The coloured bars increase from left to right the closer the crew gets the accident, and the distance counts down in metres. When the crew involved in the accident say they're OK, the display in the car following clears and reverts to the special stage main display view. After an accident, the OK button should not be pressed if the vehicle involved presents as an obstacle on the course. There may be other reasons why it's not pressed, as mentioned before, and this will trigger an SOS. Either they're injured, unconscious and cannot press the button, or the button's not in reach of the crew, or they've left the car to survey it and they do not react to the siren, or the car's blocking the course and they could present as an obstacle. This then remains as a crash notification for vehicles approaching. If a car stops on the special stage with no accident, for example technical problems, the unit detects this and the crew will be asked if they're OK. If they press OK, then alerts in the other vehicles are cleared. If OK is not pressed, it registers as an obstacle for the cars behind. Again, there is distance to the obstruction shown with the graphics bar and distance in metres. The next video shows the importance and value of this function. In this instance, the unit would record a crash and the crew should not press the OK button as even though the vehicle is off the road or the course, its position on the outside of a bend is a problem for other competitors approaching, as you can see. The SOS function is for requesting immediate assistance in situations where there is serious damage or injury. The SOS switch is protected against accidental operation with a lift up switch cover which has to be raised before the toggle switch can be operated. When the SOS is activated, the display in the car that operated the switch shows SOS on their display and the display in the cars behind shows this as an SOS. Mm -hmm. 
When an SOS alert is raised, there should be an immediate reaction to this, as it is an intentional call for help. If SOS is pressed, a decision might be made by race control to raise the red flag and dispatch emergency vehicles. Crew telephone numbers can be entered into the web application for ease of calling the crew to check on their safety. Points of interest and in using the recce units for marshals and safety vehicles will quickly identify those resources closest to the incident and who are in a position to react the quickest. Terrifying to watch, and I'm sure that it was a heart-stopping moment for the crew and spectators. In race control, the accident report would have been generated and assessed through the web portal. The vehicle would be shown as off the course, and either local knowledge or topography view on the main map can be used for further assessment. It's great to see the crew out of the car and on their feet all okay, and it's a testament to the FIA's work on safety, the manufacturers and the installers of all the onboard safety equipment and the race organisers for ensuring that the correct controls and measures are in place. The red flag function is for quickly stopping the race for safety reasons, either a serious accident or obstruction to the course or worsening conditions. If you're not using a rally monitoring system, then you are probably using the traditional notification to crews of physically waving the red flag. It is better to be able to notify all the drivers instantly with an onboard notification of red flag race stoppage. Race control can decide to send red flag notifications by either selecting all vehicles, only those vehicles are on a certain stage, or vehicles can be selected individually. All crews must respond to acknowledge a red flag and this information is shown in the web portal. It takes two seconds to notify all vehicles and this eliminates the possibility of radio messages not getting through to marshals or crews not seeing a red flag being waved on the course. We shall now take a look at the communication of the system which uses GSM 2G mobile network and UHF radio. A similar slide was shown at the beginning of this presentation. The primary transmission channel is as follows. So from the unit in the car via the GSM modem to the local BTS or base transceiver station, mobile network mast, then via the telecommunications operator to the NAM server and data center, and then via internet to rally control and the PCs within rally control. With many links, there is the possibility of a break in the chain, although this is very rare. The mobile network could fail due to network providers, However, we use multi-network roaming sims so the unit would automatically switch networks. The server could encounter problems. However, we use the most reputable equipment and most reliable service provider in the Czech Republic with automatic switching to our backup server. The internet connection in rally control could present issues. So we would advise a good provider and system and potentially a fallback system. One of the most common reasons for the GSM signal to be blocked is on mountainous stages, whether geography or mountains or environment could in interfere with the signal. GSM repeaters are available on the market, however, they are expensive. So what happens if the signal can't get through? Well, we use UHF radio frequency as a backup channel. UHF also works during normal operation for sending alerts to other vehicles on the special stage without the signal having to route through the server and race control and then back out to the vehicles. Yet if GSM does fail, then UHF is used to relay information from car to car until there is a vehicle with a GSM signal to send the information data to the server. This could be through one car or many cars. We've talked about the GSM signal and reasons for primary communication to fall down. And here are some more reasons why the UHF as a backup may be activated. 
as a result of an accident or roll, or if any of the cables are disconnected or damaged. The race unit itself can therefore work as a standalone device once the rally's special stage data has been uploaded. It will know the start and finish points and be able to respond to accidents and incidents without relying on GSM. This ensures the safety of cars on the special stage. There is a UHF transceiver module and separate antenna built into the unit and the range is approximately 4 kilometers. UHF transmission and reception takes longer than GSM. However, the important thing to note is that in the absence of GSM, crews approaching a hazard will be informed with enough advanced warning to take caution and also take avoiding action or to be able to assist where necessary, rather than nothing at all and then it might be too little too late. As you can see, the signal is transmitted up to seven vehicles in either direction, forwards and backwards, until the message reaches a car with GSM and it transmits to rally control. For a signal to travel from a vehicle involved in an accident via the mobile network and server to rally control and back out to the other vehicles, it takes on average two seconds. Race organisers can allocate radio points in areas of poor GSM coverage and also place extra marshals. With the UHF backup system, the approaching crews will be aware of an incident with advance warning and be able to assist. Here is some other information about the system which we feel is important to let you know about. Although don't forget you can get access to all the brochures, manuals and videos by contacting us. Our details are at the end of this presentation and in the notes. As we've talked about GSM and UHF coverage, let's talk about GPS, Global Positioning System. Our GPS modules are one of the best available and they can provide a position on average within a distance of 2.4 metres and are very sophisticated in their own right, which enables a good GPS lock even in environments with heavier foliage, mountains and trees. Positioning of the GPS aerial on the roof is important. However, our NCL21 recce units will get a good GPS signal even when the unit is inside the vehicle. What happens if an accident occurs and the main vehicle battery is disconnected or the rally race unit becomes dislodged and disconnected? Well, the backup battery within the main race unit will take over and continue to send alerts for up to one hour which will give organisers more than enough time to locate and assist the crew. The backup battery charging is managed when the unit is connected to the main car battery. The battery in the wireless control panel will last up to one year. The NCL21 recce units are also very useful for rally operations and they appear differently as icons in the ONI system web portal. This is to differentiate between race cars and vehicles with other functions such as recovery vehicles, emergency services and race organisation vehicles. The units can be renamed within the portal at the time of reassignment to safety vehicles. If several stages are being run throughout the day, it's likely that the time at which stages are being run will overlap. Cars that have finished one stage will move on to the next before all the cars have finished the previous stage. So when an alert is received, it is identified to the vehicle and we've made it easy for race control to identify the vehicle or vehicles involved and what stage they're on. By activating an alert view in the portal, all vehicles are removed from the list other than those that are involved in instance. It's also possible if you have the luxury of several operators in race control to deal with each incident or stage separately by each person responsible for each stage. And don't forget, if one accident on a particular stage is serious and you need to raise a red flag, you can send the red flag command to that stage only without affecting other stages or stopping or delaying the day's racing unnecessarily. Race control can have an overview of incidents and accidents and also access the detailed information for post-accident analysis and investigation and for the evaluation of the system. 
With this function, you can see the times that alerts are sent and received and by what means they were sent and received, whether by UHF or GSM network. We also have the timekeeping function. Although it cannot replace official timing, it is accurate enough for an overview and also for determining time spent at an accident if a crew were required to stop and assist. You can also set up checkpoints for split times along the stage and review these post race. Here's a video of how it works. The web portal is easy to use and packed full of functions. We have full manuals and guidance to help you. The self-test function of the unit gives you confidence that the unit is working correctly at the time of installation. We also have a UHF test receiver for determining correct function of the backup communication channel. About us. We are constantly improving our system and welcome any feedback and comments. If you want to find out more information about our company, you can visit our website or request company information directly from us. We hope that you choose Oni Systems, your rally safety monitoring partner, and we look forward to working with you. We aim to help you improve rally safety at your event and also to help you reduce costs of operation in the medium to long run so that you, competitors and spectators, can enjoy rally racing for years to come. We welcome your questions, inquiries and feedback. Either myself or Tony Chapman will be able to help and assist you with any technical or business related questions. We would like to thank Mr. Tomasz Kuntz and all of the FIA and Auto Club Czeskedo Publiki for the opportunity to present our system at the recent FIA Rally and Cross Country Safety Seminar held in Prague in 2020. These are the NAM system general contact details. Together, we can help you to have a safe rally. Thanks for watching and look forward to speaking with some of you soon.